Four people are dead after hundreds of pro-Donald Trump supporters, some of them armed, ransacked the U.S. Capitol building in Washington. The U.S. Congress has now certified Joe Biden's victory in the presidential election. Protesters stormed Congress, breaking into the Senate chamber and the office of the House Speaker after being encouraged by the outgoing president's unproven claims of electoral fraud. A woman who was shot during the clashes has died, and police say three other people died from medical emergencies. Two pipe bombs were found and 52 arrests were made. At least one senator, Kelly Leffler of Georgia, rescinded her objection to the certification of Joe Biden. Uh, she was one of two Republicans whose party lost two Senate seats in Georgia yesterday and with it control of the Senate. Meanwhile, the vice president, Mike Pence, who has been chairing proceedings in the Senate, condemned the violence in the strongest possible terms, he said. The new president, Joe Biden, said the storming of Congress bordered on sedition, while President Trump issued a video message urging his supporters to go home, but continuing to suggest that the election had been stolen from him. We have a number of reports this morning, but this first is from Sarah Campbell. The day democracy in the United States of America came under attack as never before. Fired up by President Trump's rhetoric and unfounded allegations of electoral fraud, the Capitol building was stormed by his supporters. As politicians and staff inside the building fled to safety, security officers, guns drawn, attempted to stop protesters entering the chamber. During the chaos, four people died, according to police, a woman from gunshot wounds and the others due to medical emergencies. These images beamed around the world. Those who'd taken part, unrepentant. That is just not how things are done in this country. Right. Lawlessness, storming buildings even, and that's this what's happened This nation today. wasn't founded on civility. This nation was founded on revolutionary activity. We became civil after the government realized that they got overwhelmed. So what happens now? I guess now we wait and see if, if they take us seriously because they saw how easily we were able to breach their defense. As security tried to regain control, the president-elect urged what he called the mob to pull back. What we're seeing are a small number of extremists dedicated to lawlessness. This is not dissent. It's disorder. It's chaos. It borders on sedition. And it must end now. As the violence continued, President Trump refused to condemn the protesters. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. As the hours ticked by, reaction poured in from around the world, which was watching on. Boris Johnson tweeted disgraceful scenes in the U.S. Congress, adding that the U.S. stands for democracy around the world. <laughs> After a number of hours, the protesters were removed and the area around the Capitol building secured. All over the world is looking at Washington now. They saw people storming the Capitol. I hope they keep watching it. We are the last hope for the world. At least in my mind and everything I've seen, we are free. The U.S. Congress was reconvened to confirm the outcome of the presidential election. Trump's vice president vowing to continue the democratic process. The violence was quelled. The Capitol is secured and the people's work continues. We condemn the violence that took place here in the strongest possible terms. The aftermath of what many are seeing as one of America's darkest days. President Trump's reaction is unknown. He's temporarily been banned from Twitter and Facebook. And there's talk among his own party that the president, now accused of inciting violence, should now be removed from office. Sarah Campbell, BBC News. Correspondents Ali Makbul and Lebu Deseko were at the Capitol, at Capitol Hill throughout the events of last night. Lebu was inside the Capitol building when the rioters breached it. We'll hear from her in a moment. But first, let's hear from Ali Makbul, who was outside amongst the protesters as events unfolded.
Well, we're just uh, outside uh, the Capitol building, as you can see, and just in the last few minutes, after a lull of an hour or so, we heard sound bombs, uh, we saw tear gas being, uh, uh, being deployed, and that was just to clear, you might be able to make out the top level of uh, all of this, uh, this stage and this scaffolding that was all set up for the inauguration uh, in two weeks' time. Uh, Trump uh, supporters took over all of that area, and there are still hundreds all around uh, the building. They're right up the steps at the back of the building, right to the door of the Capitol building, which, of course, is, has been shut now. Uh, but no sense that people are going to suddenly leave in, in less than an hour when that curfew uh, comes into force. I've spoken to some of the very people who actually managed to enter into the building, and, and the sense I was trying to get it was uh, as to whether this was something that was planned. And I've, I've spoken to several people now, and none of them uh, said it was part of the plan of the day to actually get inside the building. They certainly said, all of them, that they felt inspired by the words of Donald Trump uh, to, to march to the Capitol uh, to take back their country. For them, they interpreted that as... Uh, as needing to really make their presence felt, but they all said that once they got here, that they felt that they could easily overwhelm uh, security, get past security. Uh, we saw some confrontation, but they all talk about security essentially stepping back, and that's why some of them found themselves in the building. One of them described uh, the fact that he then started just to, to knock on doors inside the Capitol building, and then found himself uh, just outside the chamber, but left when uh, security was beefed up inside. We saw another one woman who uh, had uh, injured her leg through crawling out of a window uh, to, to get back out uh, of the Capitol building. Uh, but still uh, extraordinary scenes here as, uh, as hundreds are still all over the Capitol grounds. I was standing here when uh, police came through, told us to stop broadcasting, cleared this area. Us and uh, we're on the uh, in a part of the uh, uh, capital that's used by members of the House of Representatives. We were all moved into a, a tunnel and, and eventually into a, a cafeteria. Other people were taken elsewhere. And we were there just watching these scenes play out in, in the seat of uh, democracy in this country, seeing people trying to smash windows, getting into the building, this uh, really striking image of uh, police uh, holding up two guns as they tried to stop people getting onto the chamber. We saw people having broken into Nancy Pelosi's office, the seat, the feet on, on her table. Uh, as I was, uh, we were watching this, we were there for several hours. I, I was speaking to people there. I spoke to a couple of women who actually work on the floor, uh, their, their employees in, in the capital, saying they're not allowed to touch where uh, members sit like that. They're not allowed to, to, to touch the, their desks in that way. And to see people climbing all over uh, the, the house uh, floor, uh, jumping on the platforms there, they saw it as a real disrespect for the democratic institutions of this country. Lebu de Seco there inside the Capitol building. Uh, well, President Trump has been banned from the social media platforms, Twitter and Facebook, but he still has ways of getting his messages across. Uh, we've just had a tweet from Dan Scavino, who is the White House's uh, Deputy Chief of Staff for Communications and uh, Director of Social Media. And he is issuing a statement on behalf of President Trump, which we can show you now in reaction to the electoral certification. There it is. Uh, Donald Trump saying, even though I totally disagree with the outcome of the election, and the facts bear me out, well, what he calls facts. Uh, nevertheless, there will be an orderly transition on January the 20th. I have always said we would continue our fight to ensure that only legal votes were counted. While this represents the end of the greatest first term in, pol in presidential history, um, it's only the beginning of our fight to make America great again, he says. Well, let's uh, talk now to our US correspondent, Peter Bowes. Uh, so, Peter, fighting talk continuing from Donald Trump. He, he keeps using that word fight, doesn't he, just as he did in that speech to his followers before they stormed the Capitol building yesterday in Washington. And still no condemnation of the violence in that message, notably. Yes, a typically bullish statement from the president, perhaps the closest that he's come to conceding the election, uh, pledging an orderly transition of power. But there is, as you say, much that he is not talking about in that statement, uh, specifically the events of the past 24 